Broadcasting from the PLA Situation Room in Roy, New Mexico. You're listening to The Snowplow Show. Now it's time. On Prank Call Nation. Cactus, 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 cactus. I ain't playing games. Cactus, 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 cactus. Am I supposed to be doing this? Cactus, 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 this cocksucker. Cactus, 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 cactus. You've got to be crap on my ball. Cactus, 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 cactus. This going to be a fuck job to edit. Cactus, 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 cactus. You're calling me a hobo. Cactus, 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 cactus. You think a tracer can stop me? Hey everyone, good morning, I'm RBCP, this is the Snowplow Show, this episode is sponsored by Kuraz from Austria, Kuraz is trying to fly under the Patreon radar by donating a few pennies under the, the I'm doing $20 a month now for sponsors, and he's donated just a little bit under, but it's not going to work, quit trying to foil the system Kuraz, you're a sponsor goddammit. So that opening, you know, all the people saying cactus, and I've asked for this before, I asked for this back on the phone show, and and it was kind of nice when I did this, but but then I, I killed the show and never used this stuff again. But you know what would be really nice is if people listening, you guys, could send me clips of yourselves saying cactus, and I'll replace all those generic cactuses with your voices, and your voice will become the intro. Isn't that the best idea ever? I think it is. You could call the voicemail line and leave it that way, but it'd be better if you could actually make an MP3, you know, nicer quality of you saying cactus. And and make sure you say it in the same speed and fashion as it should be said. You know, that's an intro now. So let, let's, put a, let's put a new intro together. Like that one, it just it has repeating cactuses. It's... It needs some some sprucing up, you know, with your voices. RBCP at phonelosers.org. Send your MP3s there. And every time the intro plays, you can be like, Oh my god, that's me! I'm famous! On a stupid little internet show. A- another thing is that I think... I'm not completely sure on the date or anything, but I think it's November of this year... It's definitely this year, but I think it's November, will be PLA's 20th anniversary. And someone was asking me on Facebook, what are you going to do for your 20th anniversary? And I sure don't know. Probably nothing. Probably retire. So what do you think I should do for the 20th anniversary of PLA, which is coming up this November? Someone out there should, like, design a kick-ass t-shirt for me to put on the shirt store or something. Make you guys do all the work. I don't know, though. Like, I don't have anything planned. Every time someone asks me, I just say retirement. That's my plan for the 20th anniversary. Retirement forever. And then they stop asking for some reason. I don't know why. Here's a request from Josh. He wants me to prank call his boss, who works for a satellite company that is contracted by Dish Network to install, you know, dishes for people. He wants me to please make sure that David knows it's a prank by the end, because he's an extremely nice boss. But he just wants to hear his boss get pissed and lose his temper. So let's do this. So how I may help you? Hello, is this David? This is David. Hey, this is uh, Ron from Dish Network. Okay, and, what can I do for you, Ron? Uh, well, have you heard about the, uh, the, I guess there was a vandal out last night. They, they destroyed a bunch of uh, Dish Network satellites, dishes. Who, who did what? Uh, there, there was a bunch of vandalism last night. Someone went around, like, just knocking satellite dishes off of houses. No, I haven't heard anything. Okay, yeah, it looks like there's about 22 customers affected. Wow. And, yeah, you're going to have to go to all of those houses today and replace all of their dishes. Like, a lot of them well, are broken. And you'll, have to actually, you'll have to actually deal with Dish because we, they have to, you'll have to build work orders through Dish. Oh, no, I, I'm well. calling from Dish. We're going to send you the, the orders, and uh, we're not going to be able to pay you for this, though, because this is just routine maintenance. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, it's not going to happen. Oh, no, you have to. I mean, it's your responsibility. It's your area. So, I have to help you. Hey, this is your responsibility. We're going to fire you if you don't do this. You have to yeah, replace good. these dishes for free. Are yeah, you... yeah. Go punk somebody else. You're out of here. You're, you're fired. That's it. You're fired. <sighs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, I can't do any more. I've... Like I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna edit it all out of the show, but I called, 
I, I think probably 20 times in a row there, just calling over and over and over until he finally picked up again. But he, he just doesn't want to listen. David doesn't want to listen. He just hangs up on me. Whatever. I, I, I hope uh, you're nice, boss. Uh, I know you wanted me to tell him it's a prank at the end, but didn't really get an opportunity. So now your boss is probably going to be in a bad mood. And really, I should probably just delete this one. It wasn't that funny, but I'm going to keep it in there in hopes that we get a... Uh, that we get an aftermath story from Josh, and you know, we find out if anything hilarious happened from that. So let's hope we hear something. Did he say go punk someone else? Is that what he said? Maybe he said prank. I don't know. I have a lot of voicemails. I don't know. They're probably all the same person or something. But g'day, Arby. It's the ghost of Steve Irwin here. Make some more shows yet, Chazwaza. Yeah, because I haven't made enough shows yet this week. I forget to count, but I think I did more than last month again. Like 11 or 12. Maybe not 12. I don't know. But quit complaining. Jeez. Oh. Hey there, RBCP. I'm just touching myself through my sweatpants. Oh my. Oh my god. Oh my oh. Holy crap, that's local too. She, she's like an hour away from me. Give me your address. Hi, Brad. Um, it sucks that my last joke didn't go through. I, I don't know what happened. I was using Skype, and it just cut off for some reason. I have no clue why. But anyway, Fuck her right in the pussy. here it is again. How does the cheerleader talk on the phone? She gets fucked right in the pussy. Once again, how does the cheerleader talk on the phone? <laughs> She gets fucked right in the pussy. That's my joke. Teehee. Okay, bye. I think you should do all your jokes that way, like where you, um, you know, you confirm the joke after you've said the joke. It makes it a lot funnier that way. Make it like, uh, you know, radio communications. Copy that. Over. Hello, Brad. This is Louis Armstrong calling from the cemetery. I was just wondering if you can, uh, maybe play some of my songs on your show. It would be really appreciative. I give you full permission, and now I'd like to sing you a little song. Do, 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 do. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. Hey, I'll see you later, Brad. You should join our conference of conferences sometime with me and with me and Gordo. We have a blast. I bet. Bye, peace. This is Delaware. Ah, uh, Delaware. I always see him on Grand Theft Auto. But I ignore his requests. I'm just like, oh, fuck off. Leave me alone. I'm trying to blow things up. This is Carter. You need to check your PayPal. Right now. I don't know. I know you're listening to voicemails. I know you're doing a pre-recorded show because you never do live shows for us anymore. I do. And screw you, man. It's just a cold I'm trying to give you money. You suck. I don't want your filthy Good. money. By the way, this is John effect. Bye. No, it's not. You're not John Asek. I know John Asek. Anyway, okay, done with voicemails. The singing guy took up all the voicemail time, so... Thanks to him, they're just over with. Here's a number for a repair guy that works for Sears. He did not want to fix my washer because I had already taken it apart. So this guy's angry at a Sears guy because he wouldn't fix the washer because it was already in pieces or something? I don't know, that sounds probably like a good idea on Sears' part not to... I, I don't know, I don't know. What do I know? I'll just call the guy. Here we go. Hello? Hi, this is uh, Gary from the Sears corporate office. Hi, Gary. Hi. Hey, uh, we, we had a complaint from a customer. They said you were in there last week in their house and you kept hitting on her and, and uh, you know, just making sexual advances toward her. Can I help you? And, uh, you know, this is like the, the third complaint we've had this, you know, in the, in the past year about you. And, like, do you know anything about this, this incident? Who am I speaking with, please? Uh, my, my name is Gary, still. I'm with uh, Sears Corporate Office. Gary, this is uh, a, a TM by the name of Todd. I'm a technical manager. 
Okay. I'm not in a, I'm not a technician, and I don't visit house. And that's why I almost thought this was a joke. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't joke about something like this. No, sir. I, I'm a technical manager. I don't visit people's homes. I oh. run the crews of, of guys who go out. Yeah, you're, you're not a very good technical manager if you're going to houses, though. You shouldn't be going to houses. That's against policy with Sears. Sir, what I'm telling you is I don't go out to houses. Well, you, you did to this lady's house because she complained about you specifically. You said you kept making advances toward her. Who? Oh, what's the name? Oh, you don't remember the name? You do it to so many people that you don't remember her name? I mean, the, the way you were talking to her, I would hope you'd remember her name. No, I'm asking you who you're calling. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm calling you. Todd. Who? Todd, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you're the one that was complained about. I don't go to, uh, to homes, sir. Well, th- this lady says you did, so I'm pretty sure. I mean, you, you don't need to lie to me. Just, to, like, if you could cut it out, that'd be great. We just need you to stop doing that to customers. Okay, I'll stop. Do you promise? Yes. M- maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe you could work on getting a real real girlfriend outside of work. Stop, stop using your position of authority to, to try and lure a woman. Are we done here? Well, no, I just, like, could you do that, do you think? Maybe you could just try and find a, a girlfriend so you won't, you know, be so horny all the time? I think that's a no. Man, my pranks suck today. Two fails. Two fails in a row. And that's why it would be a great time to, um, to read the story. Because I have a plan. I have a plan here. Where I don't have to make pranks, I'll play someone else's. But this is interesting. This is a story from the uh, WashingtonPost.com. And uh, the the title is uh, uh, Prank Call Legend. Captain Jenks is still a nemesis of news outlets. If you guys know who Captain Jenks is, it's kind of weird that a news outlet would be reporting on him. You know, like, they're all enemies and stuff. All this shit he does. I think I may have played this on a show uh, recently, though, where uh, the Malaysia Airlines jet crash... And uh, the the news reporter brought in brought in a uh, you know eyewitness to the crash, and uh, he did what he always does. He's like, oh, something, a blast of wind from Howard Stern's ass brought the plane down. It's probably in here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I'm exactly right. That's what it says. I don't want to read this entire article. It's really long, but it's kind of cool that a uh, mainstream news is reporting on a prank caller. But Captain Jenks has been doing that stuff for 25 years now. This article says been phoning news programs like every major news event that's happened in the past 25 years he's been on it and and said something about howard stern's ass or whatever he says you know just wacky crazy howard stern stuff so here i'm gonna go to his youtube and i'm gonna sort his videos by the most popular here's one from two months ago We continue to follow the breaking news in Kensington, Maryland, 10 miles roughly outside Washington, D.C., just north. And joining us now on the telephone to talk a bit more about this uh, Amtrak passenger train derailment, Lieutenant George Hayek of the Kensington Police Department. Uh, Lieutenant, what can you tell us about any uh, injuries or fatalities? Well, uh, of the uh, six people that were injured, two were, uh, were, were, uh, two passed away about 15 minutes ago. They were teabagged by Howard Stern. Can you tell us their, the nature of their injuries? Yes, they were teabagged by Howard Stern, meaning balls on the chin. I see. Um, what can you tell us about the others who have been injured? I can tell you that they all had Howard Stern's balls on their chin. All right. Uh, Lieutenant George Hayek, we seem to have lost him at the Kensington Police Department. I'm going to stick with the latest information that we have confirmed, which is... Which is that Howard Stern's balls aren't on their chins. But that's what he does. Uh, uh, he just calls into all these major news things. I've actually heard him you know watching the news live I, I remember during columbine during the whole columbine shooting um you know in the middle of the day all of a sudden there's this eyewitness uh i forget what he said somebody's running up and down the halls uh shit i don't know i should find that one captain jenks is amazing here let me find the princess diana one that's that's an amazing one because the thing that he reported actually made it into newspapers like across the country. They thought it was for real. Uh, Christopher Dickey, who joined us in the early hours right after the accident last night. Uh, Princess Diana, she died in a car wreck back in 97, and it was huge news. And 
Everyone was heartbroken. Christopher is Newsweek magazine's bureau chief uh, in Paris. Uh, Christopher, I'm curious as to, to learn what you've learned since we last spoke and also learn uh, what Newsweek was able to, what they'll be able to publish, deadlines being what they are. Christopher? Yes. Hi, it's Brian Williams again. I was uh, <laughs> reported to be well over 90 miles an hour, and it is now being reported that Princess Di instructed the driver to drive at this high rate of speed so that she may get to a video store before closing to rent private parts from Howard Stern. Oh, God. Who, who is reporting that? Oh. It's oh. Newsweek Magazine, the sources of yours? All the uh, news reports are reporting that. She was trying to get to a video store to rent private parts before closing. So I, I guess that was actually, uh, you know, a clip of the Howard Stern show where they're playing it because we could hear Robin in the background groaning about the <laughs> what he said. But that one was amazing because I remember reading about that in my local paper. I lived in Salina, Ohio, looked in the local paper and it's like Princess Diana died because they were trying to rush to the video store to, to rent some videos, <laughs> to rent private parts by Howard Stern. But yeah, Captain Jenks, he's a legend. Let's find one more. I'm I'm gonna cut these down for the for the podcast so they're not so long. Um, here, here, Bob Hope's death. On the phone with us is Gene Pere, comedy writer who wrote for Bob Hope for 40 years. Gene, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. What can you tell us about Bob Hope's sense of humor? What was it like to write jokes for this funny, funny man? Oh, he was he was just he was able to take the the, the smallest thing and just turn it around and make it the funniest. He was able to pick out. The, the, the best thing that we would write for him and he would be able to just just make it completely go great on screen. He was the most incredible entertainer of all time and, and we've all lost a, a great man as President Bush said. Uh, just taking on a sense of humor for a moment, can you give us a sense of, of what it was like when you would write a joke or how he would see that something was funny or perhaps wasn't funny? Well, well, see, Bob would always tell us if he thought something wasn't funny, but, but generally, um, you know, he would improvise, improvise whatever we wrote for him and make it funny. So in other words, if we wrote something that wasn't funny, he would turn it around and make it funny. So he was a pretty, it's a, he was a pretty great guy to work for then if you're a comedy writer. It makes oh, you look good. He was the best. He was the, the best boss one could ever have. And uh, from what I understand, he died choking on Howard Stern's ball sack. No, okay. Well, we're going to have to go ahead and uh, take him off the air. Amazing that even at times uh, like this, that when... Uh, they always say that, even at times like this, someone could could say something so horrible on uh, the air. The country is trying to mourn a great entertainer that uh, people try to pick a very inappropriate time to try to be funny. So we'll just move on with that. Um, we have plenty of legitimate coverage. <laughs> News people think every time is an inappropriate time for anything. Or when it comes to Captain Jinx, anyway. My All right, on the line with us now as we continue our coverage of uh, Hurricane Charlie, Category 4 storm, uh, is Gary Vickers. He's with the Florida State Emergency Center in Fort Myers, uh, which is uh, on the receiving end of the brunt of Charlie as uh, we speak and in the coming hours. Uh, Gary, just bring us up to date. Give us the big picture of what you know about evacuations, how successful those evacuations have been. Hello, Miles. Uh, so far as it is, 250,000 people have already been evacuated best thing to do is evacuate don't try to sit and wait it out because uh this this is a killer this is a you know category four and uh a finger of god pretty much and it's also a blast of wind from howard cern's ass oh boy all right thank you very much let's end that call and uh we will take a break from our hurricane charlie coverage head toward a drier climate it's amazing that in you know t times like this that someone could make such an inappropriate call but it's cool how he, 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 he sounds so legit with all his information and everything, and then he just drops that on him. There, there are much better calls than that that Captain Jenks has done. Everyone should go to his YouTube page. I'm going to put the link in the show notes along with the story about him, because it's a really cool story. It's really long and well done, and everyone go read it. You should find his good calls, because there's much better stuff than I just played. I'm too lazy to go through and find the really good stuff. Let's give JAG TV's reference check thing a try again. Uh, this is a place he used to work at, and I've tried a lot of times, and I can never get a hold of the guy that I'm supposed to ask for. The two guys that I'm supposed to ask for. Neither of them are ever there. They are horrible managers. Thank you for calling. How can I help you? Is Jeff available? Um, I think he's doing poker. 
What the fuck does that mean? Is he available? Um, yeah, if you want to just give me one second. What's, his, what's your name? Uh, my name is Greg from Walmart. All right, just give me one second. He's expecting my call. Oh, no. What, what the fuck does that mean? He's doing poker? Is that his code word for having a nooner? He's actually busy right now setting up for the poker tournament for today. Uh, Can I take a message? Is Sean there? No, he left early. He left around five. Uh, God. God. Can I take a message for you? Oh, no thanks. I'll just try back later then. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jag TV. I have to give up on this one. I've called. I've. I, I think I've called this like ten times at this point, and I just give up. I give up. Sorry. Horrible managers, though. Glad you quit that job. I, I'm sure that girl. Well, actually, I'm not sure, but I bet you that's the same girl I talked to in the last show, and she seemed like she was getting kind of upset. But God damn it now. Three calls. All of them fails. Captain Jank shit wasn't even that funny. I'm gonna have to keep doing stuff until something happens. Let's take a quick music break. I can kind of, you know, get things together here and figure out something that might actually work today so I don't just throw this entire show in the trash. Uh, here is a song uh, Dust Bernadette is demanding me to play. It's about a cactus. It's on SoundCloud. Here it is. Got a little cactus from CBS and they rolled him around in this fake furry mess. So I pulled it all off until he was dressed in his own special clothes. Now he's can really change your life. Crazy cactus lady. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Oh crap, it's going to the next song. Alright, yeah, thanks for that, Dust Bernadette. That was the greatest song I've ever... Just kidding, it wasn't. It was better than the one you sent me before, though. Okay, well I have lube job numbers left. I can call and give some people some lube jobs, right? What could go wrong there? Hello? Hello, is this Terry? Yes, it is. Hey, Terry, this is Greg uh, from you, from the lube job department. You had an oil change here? Yes, uh-huh. Okay, yeah, uh, we saw, like, when you were paying for your oil change, you uh, you shoplifted some air fresheners. And maybe you just thought they were free. I don't know. But they weren't free. What wasn't free? A air fresheners. Like, you stole some air fresheners off the counter. And you have to bring those back. I didn't do any. I didn't take anything off the counter. Yeah, huh? What are you talking about? Oh no, I'm calling from the security department here, and we can see on the cameras. We have you on camera taking air fresheners. And like you know, even if they were free, you can't just take fifty of them. I did take any air fresheners. You took all the air fresheners. Oh, it, bullshit. It, I'll come out there and I'll look at the video myself. Oh, I yeah. didn't take any fresher. I don't steal. Oh, no. I, I was thinking maybe you thought they were just like, you know, complimentary for the oil change. Right. You're talking about where? The, the ones on the counter. Yeah, no. Where, for oil change, for where? For your car, under your hood. I don't know what you're talking about. What oil change? I haven't had any oil change in a long time. Well, whatever service you had done here. I had tires done. Okay, same thing. Same thing. Same exact thing. But still, even though it's tires and those are more expensive than oil change, you don't get free air fresheners. I didn't take any. Yeah, yeah, huh. They're, they're, they're Walmart's accusing me of stealing air fresheners. Well, no, no, we're not saying stealing. You know, maybe you just thought they were free. Or maybe well, let me come on and look at the video because I did not take anything. Maybe it was a moment of dementia. I did not. Oh, shit. Don't tell me I'm like that. Well, I I'm didn't just, take anything. I'm just saying. I don't know, because it's just so, so weird that you stole those. 
all those air fresheners from us. Like you. Oh yeah, I stole all those air fresheners you, from you. Yeah, right, right. You, I'm telling you, I don't steal. I didn't take any. Like first, it was, you, yeah. When he you, says when I was buying, I was I was out of. Cause, like first you took the I ones off the counter, and then you went into the back into the stock room, and you took a box of air fresheners from there too. Oh bullshit! I, we've, I, it's oh, on bullshit. It's on. thing, and I took them, and then I went in the back room and whatever, and took some more. It, yeah, we've got it all on camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when was this? What date? Tell me the date. Saturday. Which which Saturday? Last Saturday. This past Saturday. Last. The most last, recent last Saturday. Saturday. Okay, tell you what. I'll okay, come so out so there. I was right. I was right. Correct. Uh, yeah, I was out there last Saturday. Yeah, yeah see? getting tires on the car. So, so, yeah, but that wasn't me. So I win. You you are guilty, guilty as charged. Oh, I'll I'll just come on out there because I don't believe you. You don't, bl- there, especially when I didn't do it. Yes, that that's not a good defense for shoplifting. Saying I don't believe you. Oh. Are you gonna, are you going to say oh, that to indeed. the judge? It's not a good defense, too, to say I did something when I didn't do it. Are, are you going to go to court and be like, Judge, I don't believe you. How well do you think that's, that's going right. to work? That, yeah, that's right. You're a big, fat liar, Judge. He's calling me a big, fat liar. No, no, I was calling the judge in my fictional thing here a liar. Oh, jeez. Hell, I don't... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, what? No, 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 I, no, I did. See, now you're I'm making things... Last Saturday, go for Evans car. Also, um, there's another problem. I dropped my crescent wrench inside the tire, so it's yeah, yeah, it's still in there. Like, did you hear it rattling around when you were driving, uh, when you were driving home from your shoplifting? Oh, now you see, when I was driving home from my shoplifting, he dropped a wrench in my in the tire, and the t- it's still in the. Do you really have to recap everything to her in real time? Can't you just tell her after you hang up? It's really rude oh, well, of you to do you that. Know, you know what? So We've been rude. traveling out of town for this whole week, and we haven't heard a damn thing. The whole week? Then how were you here on yes, Saturday? The whole week. How the whole are you here? Week. How are you here yes. on Saturday? And how are you? Pardon? How are you here? How are you home right now? You're home right now, right? I'm not home right now. I'm up in I'm up in Michigan. Oh, yeah, right. You've never been yeah, to Michigan. Yeah, right. You've never been to Michigan in your life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who you I don't know who this is. No, never mind. If somebody's trying to do a joke on me, I know that. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. I, I'm yeah. I'm just this my name's Roy. I I work in the toy department. I just thought it'd be funny to call up my coworkers customers and accuse them of cr- of crimes. Tee <laughs> That's weird. He hung up. I finally come clean and he hangs up. Well, finally at least. I mean, something worked out for once on this show. I was about to yell at Kuraz a bunch for making my show suck so much, but... Nope, nope. It's alright. It's alright, Kuraz. I think that call may have saved it. it may have saved everything. Good job, Kuraz. I think I should just end on that one. End on a good note. End on a good prank. Time to quit. So last night we had this big thunderstorm, like just out of nowhere. Just a thunderstorm for like an hour, tons of thunder and lightning. And um, the thing about that, like the place I live, Albany, Oregon, we just don't have thunderstorms. There's, there's no thunder here. It's like an extremely rare thing to happen. So whenever it does happen, I get on Twitter and uh, I look at local tweets and I, I just, I watch everyone freak out about it because it's funny because they're, they're like scared to death of the thunder because they never hear it before. So I'm going to read a couple of these tweets. They're the best tweets ever. Um, most of them are teenage girls, but there's, there's some by, um, you know, males also and, and older people. Uh, like this one from Patty. It says, I always hated the thunder. My ex-boyfriend used to help me get through it. Now I've got my bestie telling me everything's going to be okay. She's got like crying emoticons. Uh, this other guy, John, John, he says thunder gets closer into lightning, which means lightning gets closer to us. We must watch and see while we work through the night. Like they're going to have a long sleepless night just because it's thundering. Uh, another guy, Ronaldo, he says... How is their th- wait? I should be playing like a uh, sad, scary music or there, yeah, psycho music. 
Michelle music. I'm reading tweets, so it makes sense, right? Uh, Big Booty Princess says, Thunder scares me. Fuck this crazy-ass weather shit. A uh, guy named Robert. Oh, no, never mind. Forget him. He's being funny. Uh, this Okay, this girl. Her name is Hales, I guess. She says she's crying right now. She hates the thunder and lightning so much. Bunch of sad faces. Girl named Mason says, I don't understand how people can like this thunder and lightning. It's freaking me out. A guy named Drew. I am not easily scared, but that last crack of lightning and thunder nearly made me jump out of my bed. A uh, girl with a sad face. This thunder is shaking my whole house. I don't know. Lots, lots of sad faces and scared looking faces. Girl says, uh, I've never in my life heard thunder like this. Yeah, okay, now that I've started reading this, this is really boring, isn't it? I'm sorry. What am I doing? I had a good prank, and I'm ruining it with stupid tweets. Here's a guy saying, I've always been scared of thunder ever since I was a kid, and I still am. Yeah, those were the tweets. Michelle's been tweeting again, too. She tweeted at me on, on one of my other Twitter accounts that she didn't know it was me. Getting all upset at me again. So I guess it's time to quit, right? I don't know, I could try one more Walmart. But it'll probably suck, and then that'll ruin it, you know? I, I had a good call. Could have ended on a good call. But let's do it anyway. Let's see what happens. Hello? Hi, is this Aleandra? Leandra? Yeah, is this you? Yes. Oh, okay, I'm calling from the lube jobs department. You had your oil changed here? Uh-huh. And um, it looks like, I mean, we were checking the security cameras, and we saw that you stole, like, a case of oil on your way out, like you shoplifted it. We just need that oil back. No. Yes, we do. I didn't, no, I didn't, I didn't. You're the one that brought the, the car in for the oil change, right? Yes. Okay, yep, that was you then. You stole all this oil, a whole case of it. Where? Uh, you know, from when you paid. You, you know Who where. Who are you it. looking for? Alejandro? Yeah, yeah, Woods. No, 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 this is not Alejandro. Are you, which one are you? It says Hal Aliandra. Is that the same thing? And what's the, and what's the last name? Woods. And the first name? Oh my god, again? I already told you. Yes, and I definitely did. And where did I put that? Under your dress. Look, we saw you. It was on camera. You took a whole case. You got to bring that back. Really? Really. Are, you sound surprised that it, you're not allowed to shoplift things. No, it's not that I'm surprised. I didn't do that at all because I didn't even wear a dress. So you're just You're just surprised that you got caught then? No, I'm trying to figure out. You said I wore a dress and I didn't wear a dress. I honestly. didn't say a dress. I said under the thing you that did. you're. I said under the thing you're dressed in. Under like the what? Your sh your your shirt, dummy. You a, just a you, case of oil, really? It's a small case. It's just you know, it's not that many containers. Just bring it back, okay? It's it's all we. That's all we ask. Okay, I sure will. When are you gonna bring it back? Um, as soon as you come pick it up. No, no. That, that's how would that work? How would us picking it up be bringing it back? Is that shoplifter logic? Who is this? Who are you calling for? You know who you are. You and you told me you're the one that came in for the oil change. So I know it's you. I, I recognize your hooker voice too. So I mean that I know it's you. I remember you. I remember your voice. You and that hooker voice. My hooker's voice. Yes. And when did I see you? How do you, I didn't talk to no girl or no guy. So how did you see me? I'm the one that did the oil and change. I, and I, and took, I, was, I took a whole case of oil and put it under my shirt. Really? Really? Logically? Just bring it back, okay? All we ask. Just want our oil back. It's a lot of oil. We're almost out of we're almost out of oil. We don't have it for the other customers now because you took it all. I don't know what you want me to do. Bring it back, dummy. Come and pick it up. Just come and pick it up. Just come in your um security car that you saw me taking something out of the store and just come and pick your oil back up. My my, my well, golf my golf cart security car. It's not allowed on the public roads. Okay, so. 
I'm just trying to understand. I don't see yes, yes, around. Well, t- tell that smart ass in the background to shut the, the fuck up. Number. You have the wrong number. No, I don't. You told me that I had the right person. Ali Andra. No, we... I didn't tell you you had the right person. However your I dumb said, hooker name is spelled. That's not my name. Yeah, but you had the oil change, and we have your number here in the computer, so it's definitely you. Okay, what kind of car is it? I don't have to tell you shit, lady. Just bring the oil back. Well, then I ain't bringing you your oil back. Oh, so now you admit you have the oil. Nope, I'm not admitting that I have the oil. You just admitted it. You said you're but not I bringing it back. You, no, I won't be bringing you any oil back. You, you wouldn't say that if you didn't have it. I'm just saying. I don't have it, and if I did, I'd bring it, but you are, if I did... You are a bad liar. Wouldn't. You're a worse liar than you are a shoplifter. Oh, got time for this. You have a nice Why don't you hang up then? I guess I had the name wrong on that one. I don't know. Aleandra? Aleandro? She's something. I don't know. That was amusing, I guess. Uh, it's starting to get hot up here. It's it's nearing noon. It's already getting hot. It's going to be like in the 90s today. That sucks. But that's going to be my excuse to quit the show. I mean, it's getting late anyway. I need to quit anyway, but... G'day, Brad. What's the difference between a man and E.T.? I don't know. What is e. the difference? E.T. phoned home. E.T. phoned home. That's not even a joke. How's that a joke? I guess he's writing jokes, because in the last show I requested that people write jokes. But you have to write good jokes, not stupid jokes. I'll tell you another one. This bloke goes up to a sheeler in the street and he says... What the hell's a bloke? I'd like to kill you, love. What's your telephone number? And she says, It's in the phone book. And the man says, What's a phone But I don't know your name. And the Sheila says, Well, that's in the phone book too. Ha ha. Hey, did you know that most Americans don't have a family tree? They have a cactus tree. Why? Because their families are full of pricks. Anyway, ha, ha, ha. this morning I gave my neighbor a present. He's this blind, blind bloke. He ended up calling me a fucking asshole. I take it he didn't like the cactus I gave him. Anyway. I feel like I'm listening to stand-up now. <laughs> oh, why did the crack, Why did the cactus cross the road? It was stuck to the chicken. Good night. I'll be here all week. <laughs> See? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call your joke stupid. It, it's, it, it, was, it, it was amusing. It was amusing stuff. Brad, this is your brother, Brian. Beige box, bell pepper. Uh, me and your sister here uh, were calling because you didn't come to your the meeting that we had set up the other day. Oh, the we're intervention. We're really concerned about you, Brad. You need to come down, stop making prank phone calls, and talk to us. You haven't seen your children in months because you're locked away in your attic making prank phone calls. So I live with my children and my brother and my sister? <sighs> your entire family is getting really sick of you just doing nothing but prank phone calls. So if you could call us back and talk to us, It'd be appreciated. Thank you. All right, and I'll get right on that. I'll call you back as soon as I end the show, which is now. First, I'm going to call that girl in Portland, though. So, yeah, yeah, show's over. I'm done with the show. It's time to end the show. Thanks for listening. Uh, support the show, patreon.com slash phone losers. Uh, I'm going to get packages out early this month, I think. I think I'm going to be getting them out, them out this weekend, some of them. Uh, definitely within the next week. You know, it usually takes me forever. I'm, I'm like running a few weeks behind, but I'm going to be back on top of things this month. So if you're a Patreon person that gets stuff in the mail, then expect stuff soon. And I guess, you know, support PCN on Patreon. Patreon.com slash prank call nation. But more important is to support Patreon.com slash phone losers. Uh, Jihad's show is tonight. It's Friday night. Uh, Giad's going to be doing a show, as far as I know. I didn't ask him, actually. But uh, he rarely misses. He'll probably be on tonight. So everyone should be uh, listening to PCN, prankcallnation.com, to Giad's Art of Phone Larking show. Bye, everyone. Don't forget to send me those cactus clips. Clips of you saying the word cactus. Email them to me. 